Matt, Julianne, thank you for joining me. Uh, just to catch up this afternoon, obviously you've been here three months now with the club. Start with you, Julianne. As I say, three months since you both became co-chairs at the football club. How have you enjoyed the opening three months here? Uh, we've absolutely loved it. I mean, it's not been without its rocky patches, but the joys of what we're experiencing far outweigh the rocky bits. Uh, the people of York have been incredibly welcoming. York City Football Club is a club is amazing. It's got a great feel of everyone gels together, everyone's working together for the same reason. So it's an exciting place to be. It's it's turned out to be um, it's turned out to be a really positive journey so far. And Matt, then three months as well for yourself. Has it been as expected as what you thought when you first came in? No, definitely not. It's been um, quite stressful but in a really good way. Uh, there's been a lot of ups and downs and changes but I think, you know, we're on the right path now and, and I've I've loved it but definitely a lot of sleep was nice and quite stressful. I'll touch upon that obviously yeah. the success that well obviously ups and downs that we've had but what's been your most memorable moment for you both so far? Footballing wise? Um, most memorable moments for me are every time we score. <laughs> uh, probably dagging them away absolute scenes great game. Saw you in the away end, obviously at Dagnum there. Yeah. Created a relationship with the fans. What's that like? Oh, it's amazing. I get on. I mean, I haven't met anyone that I haven't got on with yet. Everyone's. I really like the people of York and, and just Yorkshire in general. They're a lot different to what I'm used to in London. A lot kinder and and welcoming, and and you can have a chat kind of about everything. So I, I'm really happy with the relationship with them at the moment. And you both also moved up it, up north into North Yorkshire. What's not, it? not both of us. Not both. No. Um, Matt lives definitely up north. I'm spending a lot more time here, looking for a property. If anybody's got anything, DM me. Um, but no, absolutely love love York, love Yorkshire. Same as Matt. Love the people. I know we could be friendlier, more welcoming. Um, love the accent. And York, beautiful city as it is, a club with a lot of potential. Just obviously, how do you see the club's potential growing over the next few years? I think I said it when we come in is that there's not really a limit on this club. You can take it as far as you want to take it. What we didn't really realise when we first came in is just, yes, you've got a really amazing fan base and um, you know, you've know you got a, a great stadium and stuff like that, but the actual foundations of the club maybe you know, before us weren't laid for that success so obviously you don't have a god given right just because you're in a great city and great fan base to to be up in the upper echelons but i think what we've had to do since coming in is is start laying those foundations for sustained success rather than going oh we're going to come in and everything's already set up and we're ready to go and go and go because if that was the case i mean they would have done it wouldn't they and with the stadium here, obviously a great facility, just how does that play its part in helping the club achieve that goals going forward? Um, the stadium definitely comes with its challenges because there's quite a few stakeholders that you have to take into consideration every time you're making a decision on anything. And it's challenging. Um, we're really hoping to work alongside the council and the other two stakeholders to alleviate some of the challenges and to enhance a match day experience for our supporters because that's where we're seeing the where there needs to be more alignment. So, so far, you know, the conversations are going on and everybody's willing to speak about it. So that's, those are the first steps. And obviously with the three months being here, you've both been able to develop an understanding of how everything is run on a match day at the football club. What's your view on how everything runs and how smooth do you think it is? I, I think that it's, uh, you know, there's definitely some work that needs to take place to make it, like you've got obviously a top class facility, but it's just like, I said was uh, with so many different stakeholders and who controls what and who does this and who does that it's you know it's kind of the cohesion maybe isn't as as good as it should be um, and then that has a trickle down effect and makes the experience not what we want it to be for for you know our fans I think one of the biggest things that Matt and I really want to improve on from the stadium side is just that match day experience you know if, if, if the football side is all working and jellying and moving moving along then the other big important priority for us is to make sure that our supporters and our fans that are you know coming and supporting us actually have that incredible experience when they get here 
and that um, undoubtedly still needs a little bit of work. And a lot of a lot of supporters and fans have been really vocal and really honest with us about that. And we are we are a hundred percent working on it. It's not going to happen overnight, but we are definitely a hundred percent working on it because we want it to be a great experience for everybody when they get here. And we've improved that experience, as you say. That there's many avenues that you can look at in terms of retail, hospitality. How do you think they've kind of developed over the last few months? Well, we've got new people in place now. We've got a new head of commercial. So I think our retail is starting to really, really improve. Our, head, our hospitality, that's challenging. You know, we've got 5,000 fans showing up and we've got lineups and queues at the South Stand. We've got lineups and queues at the West End. There's issues with music and getting into the atmosphere. Um, but as I say, right now, everybody's willing to have a conversation about it. So our hopes are that we're going to fix it not overnight, but it's definitely in the works. On the pitch, obviously you set goals to achieve certain time scales, but how do you feel that the club are kind of matching them at the moment? How are you monitoring them, in there, for example? So I think obviously from the outside looking in, we and like I said before, when we come in, you think everything's laid for success, but you know, after being here for three months and, and kind of realizing you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done at the training ground. There's positions, you know, for example, sports scientists that need to be filled, uh, data analysts that need to come in. Obviously, we've got a new manager who's been fantastic who's come in. So I think for us, it's less of a concern of where we are in the table as long as we're not right down there. But um, I'd say to the fans that this season is let's get everything in place as much as we possibly can so that next year we can really make an assault on it. And just a word on manager Neil Ardley, you brought him in just over a month ago, just how much of a positive positive impact sorry, has he been on the players? Yeah, I mean, I, I know from when I spoke to the players that they absolutely have loved him coming in and I know we've loved having him here and he's you know very straight talking and, and he's obviously been at successful football clubs before so he knows what it takes to to build one so it's also having his input on a lot of the stuff that we're trying to do is 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 fantastic with them goals obviously you've set them you want to try and achieve them but for the fans there's a realistic goal of what they want to achieve do you feel that what you want to achieve and the fans want to achieve that they align i don't know because i can't speak for every fan but i think you know you're always going to have the dreamers out there that think that we should should be winning the league, which you know one day I believe that will happen. Um, I think that patience has to to ensue, and and that's key. And you know you'll see improvement, improvement, improvement. I think it's already begun. Um, uh, so I think for me, the fans can have their own opinion of where they think we should be finishing. I think. This is a long journey. It's not a one-season sort of thing, and let's build for su sustained success. and And hopefully, they understand that and can come on the journey with us. I think what's really exciting for us is Matt and I often come into a lot of really positive messages from a lot of supporters saying that they can see that the change is is, is going up. It's not we're not going backwards. We're definitely going forwards, and they can see, as I think we said when we very first spoke um, publicly, is actions speak louder than words. We can we can talk as much as we want about what we want to do, but we're actually really trying to do it. And we don't have a magic wand that's going to go. Oh, this is happening overnight. But you know, in the background, there's a lot going on, um, and it's going on because we want York City Football Club to be successful. And away from the league. This weekend we start the FA Cup campaign against Needham Market. Cup competition is what everyone would love to do, whether that's the cup or the trophy, but for business sense, for you, Julian, how crucial and how big does an FA Cup run, for example, help the club? Oh my goodness, you're asking me a really big question because, um, I mean, from I look at everything from a business point of view and a financial point of view, it's sort of like the partnership. I mean, obviously from a revenue point of view, obviously, it helps us greatly, you know. If we if we keep winning and, and we get the cup uh, finals or semi finals, because she she uh, don't know what you're talking about. Basically, that's, that's way right. too far. That's probably true. I hope it's <laughs> semi finals and finals. But listen, I think what she's trying to say is let's try and get to the third round, get Arsenal away or Spurs away, and and that's the season paid for, and then some. So you have to remember it's only recently I really learned about the offside with a salt pepper and a pepper shaker from my son so when you're asking me football questions yeah. I'm probably going to kind of give you you almost a... promised the semi-final final that's uh... did I? 
Yeah, that would have been. Might happen. It might. It might happen. You never know. Maybe it's a Freudian slip. Let's go with that. <laughs> Looking ahead now, obviously, the club, obviously, you've said what we want to achieve this season next. Is there anything away from on field? Anything that you want to try and engage with the fans more? Or anything that you want to implement to try and improve that like experience? Yes, I think there's things that we're looking at in terms of you know retail stuff and and uh, fan experience closer to the stadium. Um, I think we're probably overdue a fan forum at some point. Um, I think it would be a good time to probably get one of those going. So I think we've got to look at when to do that and when that ever you know what's the best time to do that. And that would probably be my piece on that. And we want to get a lot more involved with um, York City businesses. We want to get involved a lot more <coughs> with how we can collaborate with other initiatives that are going on within York City, so we can get involved. Um, we want to look at doing events. Um, we want to look at doing a manager's Q&A. We just want everybody to understand that it's not just Matt and I, that there's a manager and an assistant manager and the players and get everyone um, as involved as we can. Yeah. And some of the stuff that we've implemented on a match day this year, we've looked at foundation fixtures that focus on certain things such as mental health and stuff like that. Just how great is it to engage with that wider community in York? I mean, for us, it's huge. It's, 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 a, it's a, you know, working within the community and working with the foundation as an arm into the community to be able to engage um, as much as we possibly can, whether it's through education, whether it's through um, helping other charities achieve their goals. You know, we want to get, we're trying, we're, we're trying to get much more involved, but as you know, it's been three months and we've got a lot of initiatives planned for the coming year. And one final question from me, is there any messages that you want to give to the fans? Yeah. You go with me first. You go first. Okay. <laughs> so the best of the last. Um, no, I would just say, look, it's been amazing meeting everyone and, and the way you've treated me and my family and my friends and has been fantastic and, and I'm, I feel at home here. Um, I really hope, you know, you can stick with us through this sort of ups and downs because I think it will be. Um, but, and I don't make a promise lightly, but I promise, you know, really good times are coming to York and you just got to stick with us and, and I believe that we'll take the club to, to where it belongs. I mean, I couldn't agree with Matthew more. I guess the one thing I would say is that, you know, we've, we've both of us have completely fallen in love with York City Football Club as well as York City itself. Um, you won't get two more people in the background trying as hard as we possibly can and giving it our very best to get where we all hopefully really want to be. Um, we're sitting here trying every day to take the club forward um, and we were, as Matt says, I really hope that the supporters and the fans stick by us and stand behind us whilst we're doing it.